Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today we are going to be focusing on the Teach Me to Draw series. Okay, this series is for people who are new to artwork, new to drawing, and also those that have been drawing for a really long time and have never really leveled up to the next level. And, you know, there's a few things that come to mind that are really important to factor in. Okay, let's say you have this idea for a really cool character and you have a whole backstory written out for them and you're thinking about writing a whole comic book or a whole book in general about them. And then you draw your character and he winds up looking like this, okay? And you never really pictured him looking like this. And, you know, you're just kind of uh, really disappointed with how it, it came out. And you're just thinking, well, you know, if I can't draw him looking cool, then my character must suck. And that's not true. Like, if this is the best that you can draw, that doesn't necessarily mean that therefore this character sucks. The way your character looks, the way that you draw them, has no bearing on how cool your character is. And it's really important that you understand that. Now, think about that. First of all, okay, there are books out there. Books that don't even have pictures in them, and yet they're seen as classics. Amazing works of art. Books like Moby Dick. Books like uh, Dune. Lord of the Rings. Books that people take seriously. And they don't have a single drawing in them. And yet, they're seen as being good. Now, later on, other artists have gone ahead and drawn out illustrations of all the characters in those books and made them look cool. But if the artist was asked to actually to draw the characters, that artist probably would have drawn Moby Dick or Bilbo Baggins or, or Frodo Baggins looking like this. They, they couldn't, they probably couldn't draw very well. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't be able to draw if they actually put in the effort with the craft, okay? Comic books, okay? Let's talk about comic books real quick here. Okay, now with comic books, it used to be thought that you needed to have really good artwork in order for it to be a good comic book, but that's not true. Image Comics during the 1990s came into existence and most of their stories sucked and they came up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of of comic book characters that looked really cool. Like, without a doubt, they looked awesome. But no one gave a damn about them because they were stupid. All of the most talented artists were moving over to Image Comics during that time. And so, you know, Marvel, DC, they had to kind of make do with what they had. And the thing that kept them in business, by and large, was actually popping out high quality stories during that time. I, I can't recall the specific comic book, but it looked terrible. But the story was good. Okay, now video games, okay? Hollow Knight. Some people might think the art style in Hollow Knight was awesome. Personally, I don't. I don't really like the art style. It's grown on me, though, because the gameplay and the story, the world, has grabbed me. I've embraced that art style. Iconoclasts. The art style in that whole thing doesn't appeal to me. However, the thing that I come away from is the story. So ultimately, if you're good at t storytelling, the way this guy looks doesn't really even matter. Not even a little bit, okay? So it's important that you understand that, okay? Now, are you, like, the thing is, is like, it's just really difficult to teach artwork. And some of the reason is because of this, okay? First of all, you don't know what you don't know, okay? And guess what? When someone sits down and goes to teach you, they don't remember what they didn't know or what you don't know. So it's really difficult to teach it. And it's not like math where you go 2 plus 2 equals 4, okay? It's not like that. Like, I can go ahead and say, okay, so in order to draw the human head, you need to uh, kind of think three-dimensionally and such like that. And you have to create a sketch that actually looks somewhat three-dimensional, something that makes sense in some sort of way. And, uh, you know, uh, even though I'm getting really scratchy and stuff like that, I know exactly what all of my guidelines mean and, uh, like, I don't really need to be super careful. And so I, and I've done this a million times, so I know exactly what it is that I want out of this picture. And so, like, notice how quick it was that I sketched that out. Like, it took me no time at all. 
And if if you wind up having your finished image right about the same time that I finished doing the sketch, and look how scratchy and ugly that sketch is. It's never going to be the final thing that shows up on a picture. I'm never going to I'm never going to put that down and, and and say it's a finished work of art. Like there's no way in heck that I'd ever do that. Um let's see. Give him a little bit of an expression, I guess. And so like this right here, like I can I can show you each and every single step and you can watch what I'm doing in slow motion even and uh, you might not I mean I don't know you might learn something from the experience you might learn something from it but uh, chances are yeah you're, you're gonna learn something but it's not gonna be enough for you to uh, really draw go from drawing the 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 guy that I drew out from the very beginning of the video to drawing something that's a lot more fleshed out and professional. The thing about artwork is it's a learned science. It's it's not it's not as easy as two plus two equals four. You need like every single time that you sit down and draw, you need to actually work out the logic. Yeah, like every single time you have to go one two oops two three four four basically every single time that you sit down to draw so it's it's not it's you you can't just memorize four really like you can know four is going to be your end result but every time you sit down you have to draw out your guidelines you have to be willing to to struggle and and realize oh you know I'm not coming out with with a four that looks the way that I want it to look you have to be willing to actually um, struggle throughout the whole process and that's that's the thing about artwork you're creating your own puzzle and then you have to figure out how to solve it and really genuinely um, one thing that I see a lot of times is, uh, you know, somebody will go ahead and start drawing their cartoon character or something, okay? Um, they'll start, let me get, okay, okay, so that's looking a lot better. Um, okay, they'll start drawing out their cartoon character, and they see all these tutorials, okay? Now, tutorials, this is something that's weird, okay? When someone gives you a tutorial and says, okay, this tool does this or that or whatever... <laughs> Um, yeah, it does all that with the software. But once they start teaching artwork, you need to discover how, uh, what they're drawing, what they're sketching out actually helps them. Now, what I see a lot of times is, you know, instead of these tutorials, the, the artist says, okay, we need to picture this cartoon character's head as being a three-dimensional object. And you'll see them actually draw an axis here and you'll see them draw out an axis here and you know <clears throat> and and when you copy them what I notice that a lot of new artists do is they think okay I copied what the tutorial said excellent all right so I just need to uh, just proceed from here let me copy and paste this copy paste transform move it over here okay what I see so many times is where they they're like okay I did everything that the tutorial said so now I need to draw the eyes I need to draw the character's nose and you know the expression on the character's face and say it's a teddy bear so I need to draw his 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 ears okay what's wrong with this well for one you completely ignored your sketch. If this is what you're doing, yes, you, you did the right thing. You, you got up to this point. You were able to conceptualize your circle as being a sphere. Good job. That's excellent. But everything else that you did to make this is wrong, unfortunately. And the reason why I say that is the sketch is telling you what a 3D object is looks like and then 
you go ahead and make it 2D anyways. Like this crosshair here, let me, let me go ahead and create a new layer. Let me go ahead and turn this red real quick. Okay, this right here is a crosshair. Okay, let's, let's just decide these are the front edges of the character's face, okay? That's a crosshair. That cr like earlier when you saw me draw that human head, you saw me just kind of uh, draw out a, a crosshair really quickly and then go ahead and uh, like, well, I'm being really sloppy here, but like that crosshair, this crosshair that's going across here and here, that's telling me the nose needs to be right here. The mouth needs to be here. And, you know, the uh, the eyebrows need to be about right here. You know? That's what it's telling me. It's, and, and notice how, like, I, I've also noticed that right now I'm drawing about the same speed and quality of a lot of beginner artists. Um, I'm not putting much thought into it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just moving as fast as I can. And you might be thinking, yeah, but if you're doing artwork professionally, if you do it fast, if you do it real fast, then you're going to make a lot of money. And yeah, that's true, but the thing is, is if it winds up looking bad, then no one's going to pay for your work. That's just the way it is. And so this, this is just kind of how... And some of the sketch that I drew out, I wound up uh, deciding against it. And yet here I, I kind of have a, a rough sketch here of uh, a character and it actually looks pretty good uh, but you know it's not finished okay um, but that crosshair this this cross this crosshair that's going right through here and this this right here that is important little crosshairs like that you you you'll create little crosshairs like that all throughout drawing the human anatomy Okay, uh, here we have that crosshair. It's right here. Okay, so the nose would be something like right here, right? And the eyes would be like right here. Notice how this eye, well, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's go like that. This eye is just a little bit smaller than that eye because it's further away. He's looking up uh, because this portion of the crosshair says he's looking up. It swoops up and not swooping down. Okay, and uh, let's give him an expression on his face. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, do something something like uh, huh? Let me think about this for a bit. I think you'd see the bottom of his teeth. I kind of like drawing the bottom or, or or just basically the roundness of the teeth for some reason i get a real kick out of that i i don't know why but i i get a real big kick off of off of drawing the roundness uh of the of the teeth as as it goes and recedes back into the mouth i i don't know why i enjoy drawing that but i just do okay let me uh, you know what i'm gonna just go ahead and have his mouth exceed past the sketch just a little bit because you know he's got a jaw okay I, I gotta kinda think about that and you know if I do that maybe I might be able to draw the bottom teeth doing the same thing a little bit let's let's see what I can do here um, something is throwing me off here I'm not you know maybe maybe I shouldn't go as extreme as I was let's uh and, and I'm still not done sketching here I'm not done sketching. This is part of the sketch. Um, most of what you do when you draw is a sketch. And then the rest of it is just meticulous, slow work. Um, and But it, it doesn't take as long as it takes to get the actual, uh, the actual sketch finished. Okay? And just how, how accurate your sketch is going to be is up to you. Um, do you want to have a lot of decisions when you clean up the image and make it look like a finished drawing or or, or what, like how do you want it to be? Um, okay, so yeah, yeah, that looks good. Maybe that works. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe uh, I should just uh, 
I don't know, maybe his other, his bottom teeth need to be like this, give him a silly reaction. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not liking the way this looks, okay? And that's, that's some of the thing about the sketch, it's, it's the experimentation uh, period of the drawing. You find out what does and doesn't work, you keep playing around with it, um, because like, uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll see an experienced artist draw something like this all the time and it'll always come out nearly exactly the same way as the experienced artist expects this to because he's drawn it a million times whereas where he's uh, experimenting with a, a new character like what I'm doing right now um, maybe not maybe not maybe that's not the way um, maybe uh, like for right now I'm just deciding who this character is and and uh, how he looks and and how his pose is working with uh, the geometry of everything what looks best for him at this point in time okay that sort of thing and okay so that's yeah I'm, I'm not gonna color all that in um, maybe he might have a little bit like some some muscles for his eyebrows give him a little bit more of an expression okay that looks cool all right, yeah, that's that's. Uh, let's give him a little bit of scuffle of hair. That'll that'll give him a little bit of attitude, right? All right, yeah, that looks good. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and just try to put as much emotion into this character as possible. All right, cool. Uh, I still kind of liked how his lower lip. Uh, previously kind of uh, just extruded past the sketch a little bit it gave him a little bit more depth so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm just gonna join this section with that section all right and it's messy it's messy um, it's, it's, it doesn't look perfect uh, and, and you need a lot you need to allow yourself to make mistakes you need to allow it to be messy so that uh, but not so messy that you wind up with a bunch of lines that wind up like this uh, uh, Because like where did this line go like or or, or whatever like yeah y the, the problem with this sketch for example is you know I have this line and I have this line right here these two lines like which one is is the right one? Well, I'm deciding that the line the, the line that's correct is actually neither one it's some, one kind of in between of what I drew because that one looks the most accurate to me with this one okay so I mean something that's kind of in between the two of them in this case well, well you know this line could be all the way out here to it could be over here so like if it gets too scratchy and such like that you need a like it's up to you to decide what where that line continues what part of the sketch is working and what part of it isn't see right here like I could decide that the like the top of his shoulder could be like right here or I could decide that it's down here which one looks best which one looks best well I don't know well let's pull out our eraser does that one look good well maybe not does that one look good I don't know actually I kind of like kind of like that one all right let's let's work with that one see like that's you're playing around with your sketch you're seeing what works and what doesn't you're, you're that's that's what the whole point of the sketch is in fact you know what I don't like how that that pupil is bigger than this pupil so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just make this pupil bigger because it, this eye is closer to the camera okay and it, so it makes sense that this pupil would be a little bit smaller okay now I just I decided that as the artist it's not like some god-given rule that it has to be exactly that way some of these ideas I that I have about this eye being smaller this pupil being smaller and su such like that is determined by a camera lens and di there's thousands of different types of camera lenses that make the reality of the world look a thousand different ways so it's up to you as to how you want to create that camera lens how does your brain interpret reality and that determines what the camera lens is and that's what art is in my mind in my mind 
artwork is how your brain interprets reality. Now, there are some people, they, you know, they it's okay if, if, uh, if what you wind up drawing kind of contradicts reality a little bit. Some people may disagree with me. Some people may say, no, no, if it's not photorealistic, then, then it's garbage. And you know what? Okay, fine. Whatever. There's definitely more talent if you can make it photorealistic. Definitely more talent uh, if you can do that. But uh, I'm not... Th there's not any one set rule set in stone. Maybe I like how this line would look if it started out really thick and then got got thinner. Let's see what let's see what that would look like. Okay, let's let's decide that. Let's let's experiment. That's the whole point of uh, of the sketch to to allow yourself to experiment. You know what I I. I I still kind of like some of that originally original idea where these teeth swoop downward, and I really actually do believe that I can make that work. Yeah. Okay. There we have it. It works. It works where his teeth swoop downward. Ta-da. Okay. So um, let's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. Now I understand that when you draw with pencil and paper, it's not going to quite work the same exact way as how it is right now um, because like you can't have multiple layers I just like having layers I like working digitally so I'm gonna like the thing is is since he's looking up since he's looking up okay his the angle of his head is kind of tilted like that actually it is exactly whoa let me let me create that layer again and make it green his head is literally tilting at this angle. If you if you use these crosshairs, the back of his head, this is th these lines represent the back of his head. Okay. Sometimes you might want to delete those, erase erase those. Sometimes you might not. Okay. It, you, sometimes you can get your your sketch to be too messy, and so it's best just to erase those lines. And then later on, you discover, oh, maybe I need to draw those lines back in. And that's fine, okay? But he's literally looking at this angle, okay? A, a straight line from the back of his head to the front of his head. All right, so we need to draw, like in order to make his teddy bear ears, we need to draw out an axis that's tilted, okay? Maybe not that much. Okay, so we, we created an axis that's tilted. So let's go back to our blue layer and draw out what is going on with this layer. Let me delete that layer. Is this the blue layer? Yeah, that is the blue layer. Maybe this ear would be something like right here. Let, let's go ahead and make it really round. I, 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 like, I like the idea of having round ears on him. And maybe his other ear would be something like over here. So we wouldn't really even be able to see it. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and keep those lines there because it's okay when you're sketching to make everything look like it's made out of glass. Glass. It's okay to make everything look like it's transparent. It's okay to make everything look like it's see-through. Okay, I'm using all these different synonyms so that Everyone from every background and every age group can understand what I'm saying. Okay? So, that ear, it, it doesn't matter if it's there for the sketch. Okay, so I feel like I'm about ready to clean up the image. Okay? So, I'm going to lower the opacity on my sketch layers. Okay? and Including that one. And in fact, I, I, I can actually get rid of this one, but I'm going to keep it there for now because I don't know if I'll, I'll need it later. later. Um, and I'm going to have a true black color, all right? And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, draw out this scuffle of hair. And, you know, I can, I can try to be as loyal as possible to that scuffle of hair, or I could decide to do something a little bit more creative. Maybe, maybe I, I want to add another little... A, a little uh, strand of something here. Maybe I, I don't like how this is going horizontal here. Maybe it, maybe it should go up at more of an angle. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to me to, to kind of decide how much of the sketch survives the cleanup. Okay? Now I could be doing this with a pencil or I could be doing this with a pen. It's up to you. 
what you want. Maybe I might want that one longer. I don't know. Probably not. Let's not do that. Let's not make it too much longer. Okay. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and just draw that. I, now, when I use the regular brush tool on, on Krita, uh, I, I really like the regular brush tool because it allows me to create really organic and expressive lines. Uh, uh, lines that are even somewhat unpredictable. Okay, and I, I don't have some fancy uh, screen tablet or anything like that. I, I just have a, a generic kind of run-of-the-mill uh, graphics tablet. That's all I got. It's not it's not amazing or anything. It's just a regular graphics tablet. And uh, there are a lot of professionals that learn with a regular graphics tablet, a run-of-the-mill normal graphics tablet that have no special bells and whistles. And they even say that they prefer to have that versus having a screen tablet. Uh, because they learned some some of some people have learned how to draw with just a, a run-of-the-mill graphics tablet and they say that uh, you know getting getting uh, the screen tablet makes it so that you have to move your hand too much or too far from one area to another and you know I, I personally disagree I prefer like I learned with pencil and paper and I prefer I would prefer having a screen tablet, but you don't need one. It's become popular to where people say, oh, you need to have the top of the line software. You have to have uh, the best of everything in order for you to ever uh, mount up to anything with artwork. And that is just not true. Not true at all. Okay, I'm going to make my brush thicker, and I'm going to make... Ooh, that was a little too thick. Okay, I'm going to... Maybe the dynamic brush tool. This doesn't make as many expressive lines, but it definitely makes super accurate lines. And when I clean up my images, a lot of the time I'm moving my, my pencil about this speed. I, I, I'm, I'm moving my brush about that speed. Like this isn't normally the speed that I go when I'm drawing. I, I when I'm cleaning things up and trying to make things nice, my pencil's moving about these speeds when I draw, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, ah, oh, I want that thin at the beginning, like really thin. All right, I like that. Maybe I might, no, no, I, I won't want that. Uh, let me go ahead and continue using the dynamic brush tool because there's so much that I like about it. Um, it, it, it just it slows down my brush strokes it makes a nice clean line and I really love the way it looks uh, but of course you know it's not as expressive you can easily make an image look like it's been traced if you use the dynamic brush too much um, you don't want to use one drawing tool so much that your image winds up looking disappointing Okay, maybe that's something that might be making your artwork look bad. I don't know. I don't know. It's up to, like it, you're the artist. You make the decisions, uh, and and ultimately, uh, if it looks great, you should be uh, you know commended and congratulated. And if it looks terrible, you know you shouldn't necessarily be discouraged, but you know try to do better next time. That sort of thing. All right now. Oh. All right, that's looking good. Um, let me go ahead and pull out the normal brush tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and make the brush a little bit smaller. All right. He is looking up, so I kinda want the angle of everything to be as if he's looking up. And Ah, once again, I'm going to use the dynamic brush tool again, and that's going to help me out in drawing these eyes, okay? And and trying to trying to get the line thickness to work for me. As I get closer to the camera, I'm going to have a thicker brush stroke 
than the, than the stroke that is further away. That's at least my decision, okay? Your style, your technique might be different from mine, and that's okay. I'm going to deviate a little bit away from the sketch a little bit because I'm, I'm finding something that kind of works for me. I'm going to thicken this line up and that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to this eye and okay, I don't like how his eye is just so stinking close to his teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit further away. And some of these decisions, you got to be careful. When you when you deviate away from your sketch, sometimes what was in the sketch is what gate that is what brought the character to life and yet and and so you need to know like some of the experimentation that you do with your cleanup work when you clean it up a bit you need to make sure that you're not abandoning the life that you breathed into your character uh from your sketch okay it's it's important to understand that like um it, it's really easy to, to, I guess, forget what it is that, that brought the character to life or to abandon what brought your character to life, um, that sort of thing. And right now I'm just using the regular brush tool, not the dynamic brush tool, because, uh, you know, this is an expressive portion of, of the character, the mouth, okay? And so if I can, if I can have something that looks expressive... And spontaneous with the mouth you know the dynamic brush tool is going to make it look like it's been been traced and so uh, that would look really bad so I'm going to avoid that and uh, so let's now if, if if you would have finished drawing your your character like let's see about 15 minutes ago you like if you were drawing this exact same character and you know that you would have finished this character already maybe maybe you should slow down maybe you should focus on your sketch a little bit more maybe you should start experimenting a little bit more with your sketch uh, rather than trying to rush towards the the finish line okay now the only artist that I've ever seen that's able to do to, able to draw a finished picture, first attempt every single time, is Kim Jong-gi. And unless your name is Kim Jong-gi, don't try to rush towards the finish line. Don't try to rush towards having a finished image right off the bat. Because, like, Kim Jong-gi is a modern master. In my opinion, he's on par with someone like Michelangelo or, you know, Leonardo da Vinci. Of course, Leonardo da Vinci is the greatest artist that ever lived in my mind because uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, wasn't just an artist, but an inventor. Uh, he invented the first prototypes of the helicopter during the Renaissance of all times. Like that should that that seems like it should have been impossible to conceptualize. He even came up with a, a blueprint for a, a flying machine looked kind of like a bird and, and his functionality was a lot like a bird too and uh, you know I don't like how thin his teeth are so I'm just gonna go ahead and just lower this so his teeth can be just a little bit thicker that makes sense to me and I'm just gonna go something like like that that looks good Okay, now let's go ahead and deactivate the sketch. And look, look at that. The sketch looks kind of cool, and it looks all technical. It looks like a genius made it and stuff. But there was only a little bit of thought process involved with it, and a lot of experimentation. Okay, and then I turn off my. Oh, what happened to his eyes? What happened to his eyes? Did I screw it up? What happened to his eyes? Oh, I guess I never drew them. I never drew his eyes. That's weird. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and and do his eyes real quick. I Yeah, that shape looked pretty good. Ooh. Ooh. 
Yeah, see, that's why I like the, the regular brush instead of Krita. It allows me to be able to create an organic shape, as long as it's similar to what it is that I want to draw. Um, I mean, like, sometimes sometimes a sketch has something that's like, oh, gosh, that's gospel. I am not going to deviate from the sketch in this area at all. There are times when I feel like that, and I genuinely, you know, do exactly what's on the sketch. And it doesn't matter if I do it with the dynamic brush or, or you know, the regular brush where I'm able to, to make scraggly lines like that. You know, the dynamic brush tool is more methodical and stuff like that. Um, it all depends on your preference and how the lines are coming out. If you like the way the lines are coming out with a regular brush tool, keep using it. If you like the way that the lines are coming out with the dynamic brush tool, continue using it. If you don't with a regular brush, don't use it. Try the dynamic brush. If So you, you get the point. I, I can go ahead and verbalize every single concept here or uh, just assume you guys are smart. Okay, so I deactivated all of the sketch layers, and by and large, I like it. However, there is one thing that's really annoying me right now, and that is the shape of the eye here. Maybe I need to thin it out a little bit more here, and, uh, you know, just kind of go like that. For some reason, I wasn't able to see that. Uh, earlier, and I'm not really quite sure why, um, but yeah, this is looking good. All right, so now you know if I wanted to, I could go ahead and color the character. Oh, what happened there? There must be some sort of gap. Ooh, okay, I see the gap. How did I miss that? That's amazing. It's amazing that I missed that. I can't believe I missed that. Okay, let's go ahead and create another layer, put it underneath, and let's go ahead and decide on the colors. Okay. Now, it doesn't really matter what the colors are, but I, I'm just deciding on some really quick colors. Uh, I'm going to desaturate it a bit uh, for the darker colors. And uh, let's uh, let's go like something like this. Now, when, when I do cell shading, something cartoony and stuff, uh, cell shading is 99% of the time meant for cartoons. Every Like when you see uh, cell shading being used, you're... It's 99% of the time used in a cartoon, okay? So um, if you're not, I don't know, if you're trying to make a cartoon and you're trying to do something all painterly, you're probably making a mistake, okay? All right, so there we have it. There's there's some shading. Uh, I don't know if I like that, though. Maybe, uh, I mean, the colors. But also, when I'm cell shading, the, the shadows and highlights, I'm sculpting the character. I'm sculpting his expression here. This area right here. This, uh, you know what? I could have gone something like, like uh, maybe, maybe something like this, maybe. Try to experiment just a bit. And maybe uh, bring this down here. I could have done something like that. Maybe that might look good. Yeah, okay. I, I like that actually. I'm gonna keep that. And uh, you know, I, I feel like I got all the shadows done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick out a highlight color. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and I like I, I like the idea of having it the highlight touch there. And uh, maybe you know maybe he's got a little bit of a snout here. Okay, I, I like that idea. Um, you know maybe a little bit of a Huh. A little bit of something going on in the scuffle of hair. I don't know. It's all just a just a thought. No, or I might just avoid that area altogether. And I'm still thinking about sculpting the character, trying to think about the shapes and how it's going to interact with uh, with what I've drawn out. And uh, you know. Since I'm working digitally, it's really forgiving. I'm able to decide, oh, I like that. Oh, wait, maybe I don't like that. Uh, th those sorts of decisions. Um, I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the shadows and highlights there. Let's, let's go ahead and get a really close to white color 
and uh, just fill in his eyes and teeth. And that's the finished character, I guess. You know, I, I guess maybe I could have uh, darkened this a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So I really wanted you guys to get a concept of just how long it takes to draw a character, even if it's just a cartoon character, and just exactly what it is that you're doing. When do you actually transition to making cleanup work? Hopefully this video really helped out in letting you guys see just how long it takes, because oftentimes you see speed paintings and you just assume, oh, the video only lasted this long, so my picture should only take that long to make. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell. Or you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And if you guys would like to see more of my content, feel free to click on anything that is appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.